So this is a machine that I did, I guess, about last year with the Honda GC160 5.0. And I put this nice general pump on. Um, this is one where I actually clean up this whole chassis. Uh, we rescued it from another machine. I had a pump on here that just came apart. The hose broke. It's a real old-fashioned pump. Uh, reciprocal pump. And so I just dug it out. Let me wipe it off. We can see here that, you know, there's some water getting in the oil. I love these general pumps. I have two. This is the other one. And I don't need this motor. So I want to put a cat pump on. <clears throat> we'll take a look at that in a minute. Now I've had this cat pump around for a long time. I think what this came off. It came off a rigid. Uh, came off a rigid machine. I don't remember if it was the Hurricane Sandy model or whatever. We'll take a, a look at this in a minute. But I've been fooling around with it a little bit. Let's go take a look at what I have for this. I'll wipe this down. We'll get a closer look at the pump. And I'll take, you know, clean this up a little bit, take this off. We'll mount that pump. But let's just take a quick look at, at the cat for a minute. So I dug this one out. I got the bolts, right? This is the adapter plate. So you need that. It goes with this. It mounts differently. And I put this on. We just got to tighten it up a little bit more. I've been in here. I cleaned it out in there a little bit. Cleaned it out in there a little bit. And then also... It, I cleaned out the uh, the valve over here. That's your unloader valve, pressure regulator. And then this had a pull-down feature, so like an idle down. I just cut a bolt, put the one of the washers on it, and a little um, a sealant. Uh, it's like a thread sealant for stuff like this. So I put that on there. Hopefully that won't leak. If not, we'll, we'll make a different plug. We'll see. It should be fine. And everything is clean. This thing's beautiful, right? It's in mint shape. We can go put a little oil in it. Actually, we'll, we'll put oil in it when uh when we get it on so let's get started and see what happens all right so we're going to start off with just removing the pump now since i've already had this pump off it should come right off it's been lubricated right the shaft has been prepped this motor has been gone over it's been a while since i've run it but it should be fine these are nice by the way these are the ones with the fuel pump on them i've been through the carburetor i've been through the valves so let me let me just take this off and we'll clean this thing up a little bit yeah, I just cleaned it off with the wire wheel. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit more no seize on it, and of course I spilled oil. But yeah, the oil is like not bad. I just because I just spilled a little bit, but you could see I actually had it a little overfilled, and that might be part of the issue as well. And it's probably a little too thin because I used whatever oil I had. What you really need is a correct a correct oil for these things. Um, so if yours is getting old, just change it. Get the correct oil. They have it on Amazon. Just you know, look up pump oil. It's just a little bit thicker. You don't want really any detergents or anything in it. You just want a good oil that's developed for a pump. So let me get the brackets on, and um, we'll keep moving forward. It was a good-looking machine, huh? All right, everything's tight, tight. It's all tight. I, I put a little too much oil in again. I'm watching it, and I don't know. I'll we'll have to suck a little bit out. So this piece I just made up. Now, this is common to do. It came probably came with a uh, different fitting on the end of it. Um, like a quick disconnect female, but people say, because uh, I've looked into it, this is called your lead fitting, your lead connector, and some people do it like that, some people do it the other way, right? So this is a different type, okay, and you can get adapters for this, and I have one. Uh, maybe I'll show that later. Hold tight, uh, I'll put the handlebars on, I just put some gas in it, we put the gas cap on, I checked the oil, this oil was changed, this, this machine was never really used. It's just my backup when I made it last year. Let's wheel it outside, hook up the hose. Let me figure out what I want to do for my wand, right? Because I got a, I only have one hose and one wand, and it, they're set up differently. I, I need to order some more stuff. Let's go test it. So that's an adapter, and this is what it looks like. And that fits in there because this has that O-ring style. It's just a different way of doing it. Let me flavor these up a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of my uh, tranny fluid mix on here and move them around a little bit. They're a little sticky. And um, put them back on, and then we'll go outside and we'll do a test. 
Okay, so I've connected everything and I have purged the water line with the nozzle off, first with the hose off, then with the nozzle off. I have a shutoff valve here for the water and then I depressurized it to make it easier to start. Now, we haven't started this in a while now, so let's see what happens. That should be choke all the way out. Um, I don't remember, that's on. That's the only choke. I don't think that there's any kind of fuel shut off over here. Because I don't remember. I don't think so. I got some fuel in it. We should just be able to start it up. We may have to prime it. Yeah, I think we're going to have to. Should be enough fuel in it. Let's use a little two stroke down in here to make things a little easier just to start off with. Oh, that's plenty. Probably flooding it. And I don't know if the choke is. Now the choke is off. Okay. So push in for choke off. There we go. All right, she needs more help. She might have a, a stuck carburetor now. Could very well be. But we'll, we'll nurse it. It might come back. You know, it was stored without fuel. I might have to put more fuel in it, guys. I might want to go do that. Let's see. to drizzle out here. All right, we're going to do a quick test. All right, let me just purge it. Okay, get the pressure off. Shut the valve to get the pressure off. Pressure's off. And let's just see if it'll start without a choke or whatever. It's starting to get warm. You know, definitely. I and mean, we I ran it for a bit. It's she's running good. Oh, this one's a winner. All right, let me close up, bring it in. We'll figure out what we're going to do. All right, fellas, let's talk pumps, okay? So I brought up the three that I'm working with right now, and I want to sell one of them. One is a backup. We want one as a backup, and we want to be able to sell one to help pay for everything. I'm going to need a new hose and a new wand because I got a bad wand. I've got, the only wand I have is the Good Rigid, all right, that you saw me using. The Good Rigid's mine. That was an acquired thing from the whole, that was from the Rigid episode way back. So the Rigid's been mine. Hold on, let me back up. Let's just first finish by saying the Honda did well. It took a little bit to get it going. It hasn't been used since last year. So it did well, right? The cat pump on there, it ran good. I put a little bit of... Um, uh, gear lube in it with some 1030. Okay, it doesn't look like it's frothing. I don't see any leaks, and I can tell you that the pressure was insane. All right, it was really good, and the motor had no issue dealing with it. So, we have a really good pump and a really good motor. This is the one I went over with over last year, so this needs nothing, it just hasn't been run enough. I never actually used it. Okay, last year. When I went over it and I put that other pump head on it, I said it's going to be a backup. I, I put it away properly. It's been sitting in the shed. It's overwintered, I think, two winters almost. Like a winter and a half. We're almost done with this winter. So it was all set up and stored, and it was stored properly. It's, it was just a little sticky getting it started, as you saw. The pump woke up. There's no leaks. It's running good. It's probably the highest pressure pump I have currently. All right? We'll just hold that thought. And, and it uses... I can either put on the nipple that you see on now, which is a male uh, quick disconnect, or typically they come with 
this three eighths uh, quick disconnect, which I have another one, all right? The hose that I'm looking to buy, typically the industrial 3 8 hoses, because a lot of these simpler machines are quarter inch. 3 8 hoses is considered to be, you know, like your professional hose. The one I want to get is only a 25 footer, but it's hot and cold water, which is important because I have that big machine outside that we're going to need to test. And I think that hose is a mess. So I'm thinking ahead, right? So see if you can follow me. Remember, I'm in the situation where I go through these periodically. I get to keep the better ones. Sometimes, sometimes I sell the ones that look a little bit better or a little bit better because they go on more money. I got to keep the money flowing. So this is where my mindset is, right? So I want to keep the cat, right? Because it's the better one. And it's working good. And it's probably the highest pressure I have until I get the steam jenny going. All right, so you follow me on that. The motor runs really good. And also, that was the one last year that I repainted the deck and everything. And it needs a little bit of air. It's a pneumatic tube. It needs a little bit of air in one. So we're going to put some tire slop in there in a little bit and uh, put it to the side. So I repainted it. It looks good. It's very durable. I actually just got gasoline on it. And I wiped it down. I sprayed it with a little bit of gasoline. Wiped it off a little bit. It had a lot, you know, dripping oil on it. It's been sitting... Uh, so the paint is all cured. It ain't going nowhere, and it's it's resistant. So I'd say it doesn't look as pretty. So saleability-wise, the body of it, the chassis of it, probably isn't as nice. You can't really tell what it was. It might it probably was an Excel. It's certainly not anymore. So in terms of saleability, it's probably the least sellable. However, if somebody really knows that they're looking at a Honda motor and a CAD pump, that might offset it. But I'd like to keep it. This is the one I just did, the Craftsman. It is actually a Craftsman 6.5, 2,500 PSI. These are at 2.7 gallon per minute. It's probably about the same as the Cat, although I haven't looked at the Cat for the full specs on it yet. I went over the motor. The motor seems to be run, running okay. The carburetor is not as sweet, but a lot of those carburetors will like that. It is an aftermarket carburetor. A new carburetor for that engine, that overhead valve engine, that's $100. So there's no profit there, right? There's nothing to do. This pump could still be questionable. We see somebody was eating at it. They didn't know what they were doing. That could be a problem, but I don't see any leaks. It worked. I don't see any water in it. It needs an oil change. It is the bigger pump. It is bigger than the other General. This is an Anaverbi, okay? So... Anovi and uh, Anaverbi. So I just call them Anaverbis. They're Italian. It's rated at 2,500 PSI at, I think it's three U.S. gallons per minute. That's high. All right. That's, this is the bigger pump. It also sets up, I took the fitting off of it to test that pump. It also sets up with a quick disconnect. That's what you typically will find on the better pumps and the more commercially oriented ones, right? It's a little bit more modern. It has the soap injector. And you can adjust it from here, okay? That's generally, though, low pressure. It's not like a high-pressure injector, I'm pretty sure. Because usually you need to use the black tip. And that's your soap dispenser mode. And it's adjustable. It is adjustable here. I tested it yesterday, although I didn't... I didn't. I thought I had it all the way up. Maybe I didn't, because I just turned it, and it can go a little higher. It did have good pressure. It is adjustable. That is very useful for me day-to-day, -day because I don't always need super pressure. If I do, I have that pump. But I do a lot of times like to adjust the pump because with mowers and smaller machines, like a mower, like if you're really trying to pressure off uh, with a turbo nozzle on the underside of the deck, you need a lot of pressure. But then when you come around to the motor and the stickers and the deck and the plastics, right, you want to cut that pressure down. That's why a lot of times I like the electric. But if there's a foul deck or there's a lot of chippy paint or some rust, the electric's nowhere near enough power. And you want something with a lot of power to strip machines like that. Maybe even some data steam jenny will be rolled in. Then we have the, the, the Hurricane Sandy one, which I've had for a while. And this is the Subaru engine over here, which I redid. Made from two. It's had a couple of different pumps on it. It, it might have even had that pump on it originally. It might have had that cat on it originally. From what I remember, I think that's where the cat pump came from. It came from here. This is rated at six horsepower, and it's a very strong engine. They're really good engines. 
I've completely been over it. It needs nothing. In fact, last year I just did an oil change and I haven't even used it that much. So this one has a general pump on it. The oil on this is 2030. That's 2040, right? So, you know, we need to get better oil. The pump is starting to leak a little bit through the oil seals, but it's also because I'm probably using too thin of an oil. The pump is in excellent shape otherwise. Um, I noticed that it didn't quite have as much pressure. I think, you know, I want to check its rating. I'm going to go look it up. I don't see it on here, and I'll come back in a minute, but it is a general pump. It could be 2,500 PSI or somewhere thereabouts. I'm going to go look, and I'll come back in a minute and let you know. So these are the two biggest pumps. This is the one that's variable output. This is the one we just got working. So I'd say these are the two pumps I want. Then we have... We want to... We got it. We need a pump to sell. So I'll go look at these two pumps right now and figure out which one I want to sell. We'll put it on this motor. Okay. And then the only thing I need to complete this motor, and I'll show you in a bit, is I need to get the air filter and the tube coming, the PCV tube, the crankcase tube coming out of the valve cover. Um, I need to steal that. And then I have the air filter and everything else that we need for this engine. The engine is all sweet. It looks really good. If we put whichever of these two pumps on there, right, then we'll have a good pump rated for the, for the machine, very similar to what was on there. And uh, we know what the basic rating is, okay? So somebody will look at it and see a good, clean Briggs overhead valve motor. I'm not buying a brand new carburetor, factory carburetor for that. There's no money in it. And the only difference being is, is that, remember, these two pumps, okay, use the older hose design. And I think I mentioned in the earlier, one of the earlier videos, I don't know how I'm going to lay out the videos, but these are the adapters. So, and I have, I can get the correct handle for it. I have a handle, I just don't have the, the rod, right, the lance arm, because it split. You could fix it, but I'd rather buy a new one. I don't trust that. So I could, I could dedicate one of these, this old hose to the old style pump because the old style pump, it's still a used thing, right? It's still something that's used. It's this style fitting. And they're, more, they're female and they're more common on the consumer rated pumps and, and machines. So we'll dedicate the older hose, maybe a new wand or, or a partially new wand to one of these pumps on that machine, I'll, we got to use you know the good uh, aftermarket carburetor. I'll put the correct air filter and everything on it, make it nice, retest it, and then that whole unit can be for sale. And I'll show you when I get the new hose in. The new hose is going to be a push disconnect. So both of my machines from going forward will most likely be push disconnect, and then I'll have one extra pump. And the only thing I'll need is an adapter to get me to the old style pump in case of something or I need to test something, right? And I think I could make some money on that. Um, I'm not sure which pump will go where, right? Do we, you know, do I want to put the cat back on this this guy, which is, this is a rigid. So maybe we'll put the correct pump back on this one. Maybe we'll use the slightly different pump on here. I don't know. Let me think about it. But first step is, Let's work with this one. Get this one ready for sale, and then that'll give me a chance to think about who's who. I'll be right back. I'll let you know what that general pump is in terms of specs. All right, that explains it. Okay, so this is the general TT9061, and what I'm seeing is it's uh, 3,400 RPM, so they're all should be running at 3,400. We'll check that when we're done, but it's a 1,500 uh, PSI. Um, let's see, gal it's 2.11 gallon per minute, 1500 PSI, 3400 right hand pump, all right, right hand drive. So that makes sense. That's why that one wasn't putting out as much power as this guy. This guy's got 2500 PSI. These are like getting close to 2700. You see, this one's probably, I'm gonna, I gotta look up the cat too. I'll look up the cat again and I'll let you know at towards the end. So I think we know. We'll take that pump, we'll clean it up, we'll probably put it on this machine, sell it for a discount, right? It'll be a little bit off spec, but nobody cares. As long as everything is running good, and I take my smallest pump with the old, uh, 
the old hose. We'll get new hose. We'll move all the other stuff around. And I think that's the path we're going to go to, the path of least resistance. I'll see you guys in a bit, and I'll, I'll get you up to date. 3 8 inch, 275 bar. That's 4,000 PSI, hot, cold. Right, because I mentioned that I got that other machine. All right, let, let me unpack this. Let me spend a moment with it, right, because it's nice and new. I need to be alone with it. All right, here's the setup. I'm going to try out the one that I want to sell first. And I like to do my preliminary wash. And we got these two ready to go in line, right? We'll finish up with these, because these are mine. This one will be next. And then I got a few things to wash here. So we're, it's going to be a big day, right? And I'm not getting a late start, but you know, it's cold out. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's a lot. All right, here's the lineup. <clears throat> All right, it's getting cold, it's getting dark, it's getting cloudy. I hear the wind kicking. So these are not as important. Um, we are going to try to get maybe one of these running. Like I said, this is probably parts. We're going to be using this guy. So it's all fueled up, it's been purged, it's ready to go. Let me get it started and we'll start filming. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see what comes of it. Let's go. Look at that. It just scoured it. I mean, it just ripped at it. Now, this is the other one, right? This is the one that was a little bit worse. And this one, too. Um, you know, can I flip it? Yeah, let me flip it. We already hit it with the other pressure washer, which had pretty good power. That's that red handled one with the Briggs motor. But look at that. It really did a good job. All right. I need, it's getting cold. We're going to have this storm. Let me go. I want to try to clean out the bearings areas and the wheels and, and get cleaned up and put everything away. But we're not seeing any real leaks here. It's looking good. Um, I am going to want to probably change that oil. You know, We need to rebuild this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the power on it. And I would say we're going to, we really need a gauge. But, but we could just guess and drop the power a little bit on this thing. Um, through that regulator. I think I think we can do it. And I'm not I'm not sure, but I don't it's not a positive stop, so it is somewhat adjustable. It's just not like the others where you can, you know, do it on the fly. This is a lot of power. We don't really need all this. All right, we'll be back. All right, stay tuned for the next one, fellas. Next one, we're going to fix that craftsman, right? I already published that video, so this video now is the next one in the series. We're going to re-platform these things a little bit to move some stuff around, move some engines and pumps around, show you that. I want to get uh, one set up with the Honda and like a 2500 PSI pump. We'll get that one for sale, get the wands on it, put that whole collection together and experiment with the new hose. Like I said, just re-platform. Got a carburetor, got the HIPAA carburetor, had an issue with it, but uh, all that's resolved, so stay tuned for that. We'll have the resolution for... The Craftsman machine, which got on and you know wound up on a new body, it's mine. I put that carburetor on, hit the carburetor on, fix the issue. I'll show you that. There's a short out on that uh, for the issue that I have, but next one will be the fix for it. Oh, gotta go. 
It's time for lunch, dinner, I don't know, coffee truck.